and three number one audiobooks on Audible. They're all coaching books. And I'm also the host of the daytime syndicated talk show, The Mel Robbins Show, here in the United States. If you're curious where you can watch that on television, just check your local listings. And this is uh, a live stream where I coach you. And if you're curious about how you can get coaching and appear on this live stream with me, the text number is right down there. All you got to do is send a text to my texting platform. It is free. You will get a text back and uh, you got to opt in and then we can communicate with you. We don't sell your phone number. It's just the fastest and easiest way for me to stay in touch with you and for us to cast this in terms of uh, making sure that we get a wide range of questions and that we are able to talk to fans all over the world. And I always start this off because I am all about teaching you the skills we don't learn in school, the skills that are around understanding yourself and being able to change for the better. Judy Ooh, that's my mother-in-law calling. Let me, eh, not going to talk to you right now, Judy, as much as I love you. Um, because we're going to talk to Allie in London in just a minute. But I love teaching these simple tools that teach you self-awareness because all change begins with self-awareness. So here's how we start. Why don't you tell me in the comments where are you watching from and zero to 10, how are you feeling today? And why are you feeling that way? And the reason why it's important to ask you yourself that is because by checking in, that's where you're going to get all the data that you need. Uh, about what you can do to make today a little bit better. Today, I happen to be a nine. I am having an amazing streak of very positive days, probably because I was basically a zero or a one on Sunday uh, several days ago. So I think when you break down, you bounce off the bottom and boom, you can come right back up. But when you move through those feelings on your low days, you got a chance to not have them get buried and come back tenfold, but to actually move through them and create space for more positive energy to come through. I am incredibly excited to go to London because Ali wrote to us in the texting platform with a question that I can completely relate to. So I know that I'm going to get as much out of this as you are and Ali will. So Ali from London, here we go. Big question on the table. What is going on, my dear? Hi, Mel. As you say, I'm in London. I'm in lockdown. And I was really keen to talk to you to deal with some judgment I've been carrying. And judgment? Judgment. I I'm conscious that as this lockdown's unfolding, and you know, you've said before, this is an unprecedented time. I'm having powwows with friends about how, how we're dealing with things, you know, where to get our groceries from what we're doing about our roots, you know, we're, we're, we're sharing intel, we're sharing information. And I think it's beginning to emerge that there is a, a sort of misalignment amongst very dear friends of mine in terms of how we're approaching the lockdown. You know, I'm, I'm taking it very seriously. I'm following our government's guidance and instructions to the letter. And I've got certain friends flexing the rules. You know, I've got certain friends, you know, nipping out to see their boyfriend who might live in a different household or they're still having their cleaners come you know, nipping out to juice bars, whatever it may be. And I think first up, I'm worried for them, you know, that they're not taking the virus seriously. But secondly, and this is uncomfortable to admit, I'm judging them, you know, it's sitting like undigested food. Mm. And um, I was keen to kind of work through with you the, these feelings of judgment that are emerging. I know they're not helpful in a time of crisis when we should be focusing on the now, positive energy. But I, I am carrying, and it, it's conscious, you know, it's not just with one friend, it's, it's misalignment with multiple friends that I'm very close with. So I seem to kind of try and unlock and, and, and soundboard with you about that. First of all, thank you for asking this question, because I don't think you're alone. Um, whether you're judging friends because you think they're taking it too seriously, or you're judging people because you think they're not taking it seriously enough, I believe we are all doing this right now. And what I love about you is that you have the self-awareness to realize that this behavior is not hurting them, it's hurting you. And I love the analogy that you said, that this judgment is like carrying around undigested food. It's uncomfortable. It also bloats you when you feel this. And so 
I have a couple theories about this because as I was listening to you talk and as I realized, well, it probably goes both ways because people who are being loose around the guidelines are judging those of us who are taking it too seriously. And so one of the theories that I have about this is that all of us are doing what we think is right. And so when somebody else violates what we think is right in this collective experience, we feel a sense of injustice. And so what I want you to understand is that this is judgment on the surface, but the core emotion that you feel, which is why it's so uncomfortable, is anger. Because anger stems from a sense that you've been wronged or that you're, there's something that's not right. There's like a justice stake in this. And I think it's easy to get like that. Even those folks that are taking this really loose, their sense of injustice is about being in lockdown at all. Their sense of injustice is about this virus being that big of a deal. Their sense of injustice is that they, they can't see how it's such a big risk and they're willing to take the risk. So that's where I think it's coming from. Does that make sense? Oh, it resonates really strongly. And actually, I, you know, I was in touch with the judgment, but I wasn't at all in touch with the anger, which went, as soon as you said it, it, it was like a light bulb went off. It's like, yeah, I have been, I've been pissed at them. Um, and it's also interesting the point you made, although I've been focusing on my, my friends that have been looser, I've also been, you know, sort of in, internally sneering at my friends that are putting on the gloves and washing their milk bottles because I'm not doing that. So you're right, it's, it's cut both ways. And the other reason why this is getting triggered is because it's easier to feel these kind of hot emotions than it is to feel the stuff that makes us go numb and cold, like the fear of this whole thing. And so if we convince ourselves in our little box that what we're doing and how we're doing it is the right way to do it, then we know that we're safe and then everybody else has got it wrong. And so it's also a protection mechanism. And I think the coolest thing about you is that this is not part of your normal energy or identity. And when you feel this rise up, it feels like something that, that is not supposed to be in your chi, if you will, right? And so here's what I would do, because you don't want to stay judgy. And the self-awareness that you just displayed too by saying, I notice, ooh, I'm judging in the other direction too. So it's sort of all around me. Number one, if you continue to remind yourself, everybody's just doing the best that they can. And my friend that's sneaking out to see her boyfriend is having a severe panic attack because she's alone. And if that's what she needs to not jump off the deep end and literally slip into a massive depression, it's worth the risk. So just assume that everybody's doing the best that they can and feel a little empathy for them. Be very clear that it's not that you're worried about them unless it's an elderly you know, friend or something. It's really more in this lane of feeling the sense of injustice about the whole thing. And then the most important thing is I think you need a little self-compassion because I suspect that if you're judging everybody else, there's something about this experience that you're doing to yourself too. So how are you being hard on yourself about this moment in time? Um, I think that is um, something I haven't thought about. I mean, I'm a natural rule follower. So um, in some ways the government guidance in, in a lot of ways came naturally and was good news to me. So I, I didn't feel the pinch of that, but I think I am, I'm a lawyer, so I'm working from home quite comfortably other than the encroachment on, you know, being able to get to the office and being able to socialize. Right. The virus hasn't profoundly impacted me, but my sister is frontline. I think mm -hmm. I have- <gasps> Now we know what it is. Now <laughs> I know what it is. Okay. 
You're angry on behalf of your sister. You're right. angry. That's exactly what it is. Because it's not, it, it is personally impacting you, but that's your deepest fear. And here she is putting her life on the line every single day. And these people that you care about are not taking that seriously. And that makes you angry. And so now that we know the court, how is, did we just hit the jackpot? I think we did. I think we, we, we walked into that one and it's so strange. I have a lot of insight. It hadn't even occurred. I hadn't even made that link. I just and, think it's dodgy meanie. <laughs> no, not at all. You're working through your fear. And what's interesting is I think that also the judgment of the people that are, are scouring the milk carton I think that's a way that you're trying to calm your fears down by saying, well, that's ridiculous. It's not that serious. And then you look at these people and you're like, are you out of your freaking mind? Do you know what my sister's going through? Can't you at least just follow the fucking rules? The basics for crying out loud? Like how much longer are we going to put her at risk and everybody else that is out there in an essential workforce? That's the piece of it. And so I think that, that there's a real nest of emotions that you're unpacking and it's this, it's not fair, it's the risk to her, it's the um, solidarity that you feel with her, it's the rule follower nature in you, and it is what you would want everybody in society doing. And so I think also thinking all these people that you're aligned with, not expressing your values at a moment in time when this could impact you at a very personal level because of your sister, that feels like a deep sense of injustice and a violation of your values. That really resonates. I think that, it, that has hit, hit it right, right on the head. So here, now that we know what we're dealing with, you get to choose. And the decision that you have to make is, do you, need and want to have a conversation with your friends and not necessarily where you make a request, but where you share what you've just learned, or is this something that you can unpack for yourself? And now that you see all this, you can be complete knowing that people that you're close to are doing things that you feel put people in the healthcare system at risk? I think it could even be a hybrid. I like what, I like the compassion that you've talked about, you know, it flowing both ways, showing friends compassion, you know, the, the, like you've said, we're, we're all doing the best we can. And it's checking in with that rather than sort of marking everyone's homework and keeping tally. I think that's, that's a healthy way to, to try and reframe it. And I think there might be friends where I might be able to have that candid conversation with about what this means for me and my family as well. So I, I, it could be a, a, a hybrid approach of the two. Yeah. And, you know, I think what would help you is to the extent that you're in conversation with friends or anybody and one of those details comes up, oh, we're going on play dates or, oh, we're triggering or, oh, we're doing this. Um, that's the moment where you then relieve your own burden. You say, you know, just to, just to share about how hard this has been for me, my sister's a nurse and I hear something like that and I immediately start judging you because I'm so afraid something's gonna happen to her. And I haven't gone into hypervigilance, but geez, I can't believe that I'm sitting here judging you when I know you're taking precaution, but gosh, this is really hard on me. And you might just make them stop and think, but at least you're not carrying this burden alone. You're not making them wrong. You're talking about how that is impacting you as you're processing all this stuff. I like that. I like that. That feels like the healthiest way to get the cards on the table. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, I, you know, I do think that, that if it's a close enough friend and they're really doing something that you that really, really bothers you, you can pick up the phone and say, I just have to have a, a conversation with you because I'm sitting over here and I don't like how I'm feeling. And so I just want to talk to you about it. And what you do with this is up to you. I can't ask you to change your behavior, but 
seeing you doing this, it really stirs so much fear in me. Now, are you talking to your sister every day? Every other day, if she does a long shift, we won't always check in, but every other day we're checking in. Um, and how is your sister? Amazingly strong in, you know, she's very good at compartmentalizing. She's still got her sense of humor. Um, and actually she doesn't want to talk about it. Actually, she wants me to talk about silly, you know, mm. things that are happening here. She wants to be distracted. So no, sure. thank you for asking. Of course, of course. Is there anything else that I can do to support you? That has been enormously helpful. I feel less judgy, both of myself and of my friends. And it's just, it's as ever with these things, nice to know it's not just you, you know, stewing in your own juice as a party of one. It's, it's just helpful to know that, you know, it, it chimed with you as well. No, that is, has been enormously helpful. Well, it, it, it was a helpful conversation for me too, because I hadn't thought about the fact that we judged the whole situation as a 360. And it's partially around the injustice that everybody feels because we've all have some sense of loss of our normal life and of people that we care about. And on the other hand, it's also a way that you sort of rationalize with yourself the level of your own safety. So I learned something too. So I really appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Thank you. And give your sister our best and tell yeah, her. I will do. Okay? I will do. Right. Thank Thanks, you. Bye-bye. Awesome Bye. question. Bye, Allie. Um, I love your questions. I always learn something too when I talk to you. So if you're wondering, how do I get uh, on this live stream with Mel Robbins? Go right there. Text me. I've got an itch on my nose. Uh, go right there. Text uh, me your uh, issue, your question, the thing you need advice on, anything. Sky's the limit. And um, what else was I going to say? Uh, my team will get back to you. We're trying to get a wider range of questions from people all over the world since we reach millions of people every single day. And here's the thing I want to say. When you reach out for help, you not only help yourself, but you help the millions of people that will see this video because your problems may feel unique to you, but I guarantee you there's an aspect of what you're dealing with that somebody else can deeply relate to. Um, so if you're the kind of person that's always wanting to help other people and make other people's lives better, one of the best things you can do is share what's going on with you. Anyway, in case nobody else tells you, let me tell you, I love you, I believe in you, even if you're judging people. And if you're judging people, I hope you got something out of this conversation. The answer always comes right back here, doesn't it? Right back to us. That's where all the answers are. It's where all the solutions are. It's where all the power is. Because when you start to become aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you've got a chance to change. And when you change the way that you behave and the way that you think, everything about your whole life and everything about your relationships change. And that's what's super cool about having the chance to talk to you. So I hope you have an awesome day. I will see you tomorrow. And if there's anything that I can do to help you, please just let me know.